everybody at home. Hello, everybody here. And um, we are here in the new moon of the month of Cancer. We know the month of Cancer, you already know. Um, consider usually a heavy month, not the easy month to deal with, because a lot of negative uh, event uh, took place in this time. Yeah, so we have to be aware of what's coming. Um, to learn how to deal with it, to learn what is the change that we need to make to make it a better month, okay? That's, that's the bottom line. And uh, there is a way, actually, there is a way that can actually change it in a way that it's um, gonna be a great month. That's what we are here for. That's what we gotta do. Now, the word cancer, if we take the word cancer in Hebrew, um, it's spelled Sartan. Maybe I should write it. Yeah. That's how you write it in Hebrew, and that's how you spell it. Okay? Cancer. That's the meaning of the word cancer. And it's split basically, if you can split the words to two words, the word sar mean remove. That's what sar mean, remove, in, in old Hebrew. They don't use it in Israeli, we don't use it. Tan mean chaotic. So from here we learn that this month is designed to help us remove different chaotic situations. Now, what is chaos? How can you define chaos? Is chaos when you suffer? Or is chaos when you have a joy and you think it's a joy and then it turns to become chaos after? What's worse chaos? You know, a person going into a doctor, into a dentist's office, there is some pain involved, but it's not chaos. It's actually the pain is to cure the problem you actually have. So chaos is something relative to the situation you are in. So when we talk about this month to remove chaos, meaning that if we would have clarity about what we call big picture, we talk about big picture and we see everything, then something that we call it chaos, we call it a problem, turn into actually a thing that eventually make your life better. So chaos, chaotic time, it depends on your level of clarity. So if we can say Sartan mean removal of the curtain that not allow me to see or remove the doubts that I have about the system of nature or the system of the divine, how things meant to be, maybe we should look at it from different angles and decide for ourselves what is more difficult for us to do. Is it more difficult for us to remove the doubts that we have about the divine, the master of the world, the nature, how this universe is operate? Or it's about removing what I call chaos right now in my life. Somebody didn't treat me well, I call it chaos. Why? Because I believe if they treat me well, I will be better. But this is the illusion. This is the illusion of life. Because we believe that every time that we feel good, we call it good time. Every time we feel bad, it's bad time. So good time equal feeling good. Bad time, but since when my feeling will make a decision about good or bad? Since when? Sometimes I feel good about things and they turn bad. Sometimes you feel terrible about things and they turn good. What do I know? And that's why this month is a month that the Kabbalists explain to us something very unique. They say in this month there is no protection. 
No shield that protects you. No filter. That filter, as a Kabbalistic use the name, is called Shekhinah. Shekhinah can be translated as the female aspect of God, as the filter that not allow strong energy to burn you. So from time to time, you ask for happiness. If you ask for a lot of happiness and you cannot handle the happiness, that happiness turns to chaos. Chaos is not when you lose something. Chaos and when you have too much of the good thing. We have to remember that. Because a lot of people relate to losing. Of the good means chaos. Getting too much good is the beginning of all your chaos. So if you want to know why you suffer, why you have problem, you didn't handle very well the blessing that came into your life. That's really where it's come from. Now, when we... Can we close the helicopter there? Upstairs? Yeah, you don't hear us. Somebody landing for the people at home. The president wanted to land above the house, so <laughs> we see if we let him come. So maybe the next meeting with North Korea will be here, so they're coming. So anyway, the idea is how can we make a decision that we will be able to want more, but still to be able to handle it in a way it will not bring problem into my life. Because after all, if you look at it, if we are talking about what we call the light, okay, normally the light as a system, we build a system called a filter, okay, and we are receiving just a drop of light below the filter, so it doesn't hurt us, but it's much simple or a small amount of light compared to all the totality. So that's considered good time. Bad time is when we remove that filter away and we receive the light or the blessing directly. Now it seems like people want to be receiving the blessing directly. That's actually what life is about. You don't want to meet your soulmate after 20 dates. You want to meet your soulmate on the first date and get married the next day, right? Because you're so sure that that's the right thing. So what will happen if everything will happen just the way it's meant to be and right away with no time? Then we're losing one thing. It's called the process. Within the process, there is a lot of lesson. Within the chaos of not knowing what's really going on, there is a lot of study. I mean, if you look, if you know today, if you know, sorry, five years ago, how your life going to run today, you will make a lot of different decisions. Your decision will be different. Some good, some bad. Because you can run your life based on what you know in the future. Because if you know the future is a certain path that it's supposed to take, you're going to change. You're going to change the present. But then you're never going to get to places, to a self-study, what you meant to do. So this month has no filter. Bad and good. Good news, if you know how to reflect the light, you're going to enjoy this month. If you're going to start thinking only about yourself, you're going to burn yourself. Burn yourself. We have to act like the moon. Because the, the, as you can see on the screen, the moon is the letter het here. And Taf, which is controlled the month of cancer or the sign of cancer, is within this month. Meaning what? Meaning that the moon is how we need to act this month. Everything about our, it's called reflection. 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 How do I reflect my existence? If you don't find a way how you're going to reflect what you want, you better don't want it. If you want 10 people to respect you, respect 10 people. Otherwise, don't do it. If you want to be loved unconditionally by someone, you have to love, not necessarily they or the people you want them to love you, somebody else that you have to love them unconditionally. 
So this buzz is all about you create the filter. The filters don't exist. You don't create the filter to stop the flow. You create the filter not to burn yourself. And that's by reflecting back. That's how you're turning this month into the most powerful month of your entire life. So yes, is this month heavy? It's considered a month that a lot of negative things happening to people. Heavy, very heavy. But if you want to use this energy that's coming down in a way that you can reflect it, every time you have a desire for something, how can I give it? That's what you're doing for 30 days. Okay, I want it, but where is the giving there? Where is the giving? And I remember a couple, the wife called me, and she said, I have a hard time. My husband, this, that, that. And she said, Aliyah, how do I change it? How do I switch in my mind that I can see the good in it? I say, if you stop thinking what you're going to get from this relationship, you're going to look into the relationship in a different way. Because you're only thinking about, how can I give? How can I help? How can I guide? How can I advise? How can I be there for him? That's exactly what this month is all about. Now, the sign of cancer, people who are born in the month of cancer, are sensitive. You cannot criticize them. You're wasting your time. They might look at you like they listen, but they don't hear anything. It's a waste of time. Sign of cancer don't know how to take criticism. They don't. They just don't. They will never take criticism. They will tell you they know how. Because it's insult them to say that they cannot take criticism. So they will say to you, yes, I know how to take criticism. Just to, just to quiet you down. But they actually don't. It's not 99%. It's not 100%. No criticism. And the idea, also, it can turn into revenge if they get hurt. Be careful. All right? They're very controlling. They don't look very controlling, but they are the most controlling sign of the zodiac. Most people think it's Leo and, and Scorpio, because Leo and Scorpio are very controlling. But it's controlling of, on the outside. But cancer is what they call control freak. That's actually the DNA of control freak comes from cancer. Cancer, the word, sign of cancer, you know crab. Crab is basically a cancer. You ever see a cancer, how they move? They move right, they move left, they move right, they don't move forward. So based on the movement of the animal, the creature, it tells you a lot of the personality of the months. The months missing what? Center column. No filter. The center column is the filter. It's called masach in Kabbalah. It, there's no masach, no curtain. That's what the crab create. And the crab also, it's a, those of you who ever ate it, Right? I didn't. But it's something that people, I went to a restaurant one time, people wearing it all, they come with a hammer and say, let's eat it. <laughs> I mean, quite, what kind of food do you have to go to Home Depot to get instruments and tools to eat it? I mean, what, what, what's happening there? I, I never get it. I mean, I remember, I don't know if Debbie remember, we went to, with a lady. I remember we ordered fish, and she ordered that crabs and the other one, the lobster with the leg or with the hand. All of a sudden, they bring a thing, thing, and tools, and armors, I don't know what else, and things flying. Yeah. And Debbie, Debbie is telling me on the phone, text me, and she said, behave. I said, oh, behave. It's all over my shirt. What behave? <laughs> behave. I can't behave. So you realize, say, B'nai Sasra, say the book of Kabbalah, that the crab is carry carry things on his back. So, the pee, and it's only doing it in the water. Under the water, if there is things they need to carry, carry it on the back, and they walk, in, or swim in the water, if I can say that. And what we find out about that, cancer is a water sign, emotional. But most of the time, without insulting cancer, sorry for the people at home, but if you want to change, you can call me, and I will help you with that. Even if you're not going to listen to a words I'm saying about cancer, if you're cancer. But you get something too emotional about yourself, not about others. So the mission of the sign of cancer is to feel the pain of others. What they end up be doing is to feel their own pain. 
And that's why a lot of them become victim, vicious, controlling. The reason they need to control because they don't trust that this thing will lead them into a place that is better. And that's why they need to control everything. Control the money, control the man, control the woman. Control, control, you gotta control. But let go already, I mean, it's okay. You don't have to have a body from stone that you're gonna be protected. And it's difficult. Now, what's the good about it? Why it say in the book that they carry everything on their back, in the water only? What does that mean? Water is emotions. So when people come to a Cancerian and talk about their emotion, they are the best and carry people on their back. So they only become useful when you talk about your emotion on the open. If you talk about your emotion, make confession with them, they're your best friend. You come to open with them and say, I don't know, I think I cheated on my boyfriend, and I'm feeling so bad, I hate myself. They will listen to you. They will be there for you. They will give you a lot of love because they are water sign. There's so much emotion, so much beautiful thing, okay? Best parents, by the way, by far. Best parents because they love their home. Why they love their home? Because the crab, you know, this is their home. Like almost like turtle. They are like turtle, you know, they live in their home. So Cancerian don't see a point of trouble. Once they find love, once they found the group, why am I looking outside for anything? I don't need anything, I have my family. That's what they want. Great business people, by the way. Great mind, quick mind, but again, you're not gonna like them once you're not emotionally involved with them. Very few people around them, few. But the few that win them, close. Okay? The most close thing for them is the immediate family. Wife, husband, kids, children, that's it. Now in cancer, if you look at Google, you're gonna find out that a lot of cancerians cheat. And it's shocking. Why would they cheat? I mean, cancerian cheat? Should be Scorpio cheat, right? If we look at the chakra, every chakra is belong to a different sign. The chakra of Scorpio is sexual organ. The chakra of Leo is the heart. So either you cheat because of your heart, emotion, or because of sexuality. Can say it's the stomach. Never, hmm? Cheating. Now, it doesn't make, I mean, why, why, why cancer? This is the last sign. They're the most loyal, for the love, ones that fall in love, the most amazing, but they have almost switch personality. Any of you ever dated the cancer? No. Is that the cancer? Cheating. Like, <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. Okay, okay. So, you did? My husband. And he wasn't a cheater. Okay. <laughs> and you are walking into a minefield. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Now, they not doing it because they're bad. They're not doing it because they're bad. They're doing it because when they get disappointed in their relationship, they don't tell you. They're just gone. Gone with the wind. And then you find out, why didn't you tell me? And they ask you, would you listen? They ask you this weird kind of question. So, cancer, I have a huge respect for them. Personally, it's not easy for them, for me. Uh, because those of you who know me, I'm Scorpio, I'm Israeli, I'm very direct. So if cancer usually sit next to me, somehow I'm going to hurt them without even I know I hurt them. You know? Every word I will say is going to hurt them. God bless my wife who has moon and cancer. I don't know if you know what it means. Whoever has moon and cancer, that's even more sensitive to cancer themselves. You know, so she married me, it's good, it's tikkun. <laughs> We're helping each other. She's getting emotional, and I shut my mouth, and everybody's happy. So <laughs> the, idea, <laughs> the idea is to get into a place, to get into a place that we need to understand. If you watch here, you see this Hebrew letter is one letter. It's called Chet. You see that there is a candle. I don't know if you can see. If you do the negative of the picture, you can imagine a candle here. See that? And that's the flame. Meaning, and there is two letters that have been put together. The letter Vav and the letter Zayn. They put two letters together. Why they put these two letters together? It's about time to explain to you. 
the name of the month, what is the name of the month? Ta Muz. Okay? When you write it in Hebrew, you have Vav and Zayn. The same two letters that you have here, Vav and Zayn. But what is the word Tam mean here? It means end. It's the end of Vav and Zayn. So what? Mean nothing to me. Huh? Mean a lot. The letter of last month, which was Sivan, which was Gemini, was the letter Zayn. The letter of the month before that was the letter Vav. So there is a code within this month. It's the end of Vav and Zion, the end of Gemini, the end of Taurus. Welcome to a new time, which is Cancer and Leo. They usually come together. Come together. One is left eye, one is right eye. Why eyes? Because in this month, we either cry a lot or we're supposed to cry a lot. And I'm going to explain it now. Okay, so usually the, the people who cry the most from all the signs of the zodiac are Scorpio. Where do we learn it from? From Rachel. Rachel was Scorpio. Rachel, the wife of Jacob, she cried, you know. So always Scorpio cry. But for some reason, this month is designed for tears. Designed for tears. In this month, you cry all the tears that you never cry. Every time you don't cry when you need to cry, it goes to your heart. People are not capable to cry. It's go to the heart chakra, and then it gets blocked there. So releasing of the tears, and I was thinking about doing it, but I'm nervous, i be honest, as a teacher, it's called a workshop of crying. It's, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of work. When we actually do a meditation, maybe my next meditation, yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> then we are, like we did the last two courses of meditation, we have to do another one, and then one of the lectures you actually uh, release tears. And you can do it at home by yourself, and you will feel it, or in the shower, or when you drive. When you drive, it's dangerous, but <laughs> you release a lot of things. I do it when I listen to music. I put a certain music, and I let things come out, you know? And you will see how beautiful it is, because why? What exactly, what is tears? Why we cry? Basically, not psychologically, I'm talking about spiritually, there is judgment. There is problem, there is things not working for you. When you cry, the tears themselves as Rabbi Isaac Luria explained, sweet the judgment. It makes the judgment sweet. Okay? But again, there is tears that be careful not to take over, not to become depressed all day long. Don't, don't go there. Because then you will cry from morning to night for one week. It's off. It's supposed to be a therapy. You know? You can do it 10 to 15 minutes a day, and then move on to your life. It's okay. But don't uh, all day long... Uh, you need to see a therapist, you understand me, right? It, it, it should be like part of the meditation. This month, it's okay to do it every day and release. Loud cry, loud. And if you live alone, you, it's great. If you don't live alone, be careful because it looks weird. Do it in the shower. No, it, it does, it does look weird. People will judge you, it looks weird. You know, like I used to talk a lot when I'm driving. Now I don't look weird because people think I'm on Bluetooth. So they watch me, they think I'm talking to someone. Nobody judge. Which is okay. So the idea of Tam Vav Zayn, the end of Vav and Zayn, that's what the real meaning. The Vav and Zayn is here, is telling you, you are the moon this month. Reflect, 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 push away, push away. You want something? Push it to somebody else. Okay? You want to make one million dollars? Think in your mind, can I give one million? Can I write a check for one million? Do some charity. If you're not capable of that, do not ask, please, in the month of cancer for too many things. Because it will work exactly against you. Okay? Please remember that. Now, taking you another level. Oh, 
can see it very well. What happened here? I want to make sure that everybody read it right. I don't have the. Is it how you do it? How do I do it that it will be good? Anybody know? Yeah. You want to fix it? Go ahead, please. Yes. So I will continue. The camera is on. So the idea of understanding that you have to desire everything. And in the same time, reflect. And that's what contradicts. That's very difficult, you know? Because normally, normally people, perfect, thank you so much. Normally people is, appreciate it. Normally people want a lot of things and they're never happy. This verse was saying by Amen. Amen lived in a place called Hamadan or, or Shushan. And he said, the call ze eneno shove li. This verse is the verse of this month. Kabbalists are telling us, if you look at the combination, it's the name of God in a reverse way. See that? Yud, K, Vav, K. So the Kabbalists are teaching us that this verse, Amen, say, when did he say it? When all the... A Persian country. Can you imagine? They were controlling 127 countries, all bowing to Amen when he walked by. This wicked guy, as everybody bowed to him. One person, one gentleman, one. Didn't want to bow to him. You know what he's saying? This is worth nothing to me. One person, come on, you got it all. What, you busy? I mean, you and me. If we will be the richest, famous, beautiful, smart, famous, athletic, everything. Perfect people. But there is one person in the universe who say, yeah, but I don't like that. I don't like you. Everybody say you are the best. One person. Would you bother by that? I wouldn't. You wouldn't. How can you be bothered? Now, you can look at it in a different direction. You can say, this month is all about having gratitude for what you have. Okay, good. Do it. Do it every day, don't just this month. There's another lesson. When we get what we want, we get satiated. We get numb. We die. The biggest problem of human beings is when they think they're about to get what they want, they kill their desire. They're already... Ah, beautiful. The Talmud write. Big difference for the person who go for the basket to buy bread than the person who come back home with the bread that he buy. Even if he didn't eat it yet, he know he has a bread in his basket. That's a Talmud example from 2,000 years ago. Mean what? Meaning when you feel you got something going, you relax. You're no longer desperate. If you say this verse, and I hope you will, this month, 30 days. You have to look at your life that you didn't even receive yet a drop. Be careful. There is, that's why I didn't know if to share it, but I will. You have to feel you didn't even start anything. You were not born yet. And every day is your first day of birth this month. And every great thing that happened to you, be gratitude, have gratitude, appreciate, smile, be happy, all what I said before. But in the same time, say, the call the Enenusha Veli. All this mean nothing to me. Was a rabbi in the Talmud 2,000 years ago. Rich, he was very wealthy. It's not like today that the rabbi has to be poor. In all days, they were rich. His name is Rabbi Udanasi. We, we perceive spiritual people need to have holes in their pants and, and they need to go with one leg, all kind of stupid thing. I don't know who came up with that idea. I think it came only 500 years ago that people start thinking that you have to suffer if you get closer to God. Stupid. Stupid. If you get closer to God, you should be more blessing. That's stupid. So his name is Rabbi Udanasi. He was the richest man. Usually, every Shabbat, he has from here to Pico, 10 tables, full with people and food that he feed the entire town. 
before he died, 30 days before he died, he said that. Velo neeneti ba'olam haze afilu be'etz baktanazu. I didn't even enjoy from this universe, from even the size of this finger. That's what he said. What does that mean? You did enjoy. You were the richest person ever. You did enjoy. When a person realizes how big, how large is the universe, he realizes that we are not even a drop in the ocean. So you need to keep yourself in two frames. This month, don't go into a place of, wow, I did this, I did this. Because I see most people who fall, fall either because they receive more than they can handle, or either they stop asking for things after they think they receive it. Remember those rules, please remember. Let me tell you what happened in this month a little bit. 17 days of the month of the time we fast. The tablet, the Ten Commandments was broken. Broken. Moses came down from the mountain. Golden calf. Did God knew it's going to be broke? <laughs> Catch 22, huh? All the cavalry said yes. Whoa. See, if he knew they're going to be break, he knew everything, what did we get judged for? Your entire choices, whatever you're going to do with your life, your struggle, everything, it's been written already. This is scary. That can make you lose your mind. The one person who deal with it, if you really want to go deep into it, it's in English, but you have to be careful how you... Because once you gain in, it's a philosophy. His name is the Rambam, my monetist. But again, it's a very tough book. I don't know the name of the book in English. In Hebrew, it's called More Nevochim. You know the name by any chance? More Nevochim. It's not a book for everybody. It's not Kabbalah. It's tough philosophy, but tough. You, you're going in, and it, it's sometimes rough to handle the, the information because he's asking question, and that's why a lot of time people excommunicate him as a rabbi. He was a doctor too, by the way. <coughs> was a medical doctor and a rabbi. So... Advice for the Pepsi. That's, that's the word. You see, it's a word I cannot even say. <laughs> Guide for something? For Pepsi. Guide for Pepsi. <laughs> Complex? <Perfect>. Complex. <laughs> okay. So it's, again, it's a book that you, if you have free time and you want to get into it, if you start getting a headache, please close the book and put it on the shelf, okay? Do not read it. Because I have it and I read it from time to time. And one of the questions that he asked there, and it's a tough question. If the divine God, the creator, know already what we're going to do with our free will, why we even have a free will? That's one of the questions he asked. Then you go deep into it, and then when you get lost. Bottom line, I'll give you the answer. Bottom line, but you might come into different conclusion. From the divine point of view, there is no free will. From our point of view, there is a free will. I'm not going to go further with that, because then how can that happen? You have to read. It's, it's a lot of information. Up there, not everything is written. Your story written, your song, everything. It's done. The beginning and the end already happened. It's over. From our point of view, there is a little game, and she was, and so we feel good about ourselves. Like we do make some choices, you know? So you, you know those people on the diet, they start a diet, and they eat so much in one week, and the next week they don't eat at all, at all. And they think they choose it. Can you imagine even that already been written? It's embarrassing, huh? <laughs> so if we will start, that's why that book, they're not recommended to people to read a lot because make you lose your mind. They said, okay, so what am I doing here? What am I doing here? So it's pretty much been written. So they write here that the tablet meant to be broken. The golden cup meant to be built. So why? So he said, go to the Bible and look what Aaron the high priest say after they created the golden cup, which is the worst sin the Israelites ever did. What he say? It's very interesting. Nobody understands why this verse is there. He said, Machar Chag Hashem. Tomorrow will be a holiday. They just sin. They just sin. 
They dancing around the golden calf. Aaron, the high priest, the holiest person that exists, say, tomorrow it will be a holiday. So the Kabbalists go ahead and say, what does this mean? Tomorrow will be a holiday. Because the day that was the worst day of the year, which is two days, one is 17 of Tammuz, highly recommended to fast from morning to night. Because when you fast, it's not fasting for diet. It's not about losing weight. It's about you fasting, you get in touch with your soul, not with your body. And you're asking the creator, the divine, help me to control this body. This baby misbehave. The soul is perfect. Your soul never did anything wrong. But this body, I'm telling you, how can you train the body? This body do whatever he want. Whatever they want, he just go. He want food, he want this, he want to date the wrong people. It's all the body problem, ego. The soul is so beautiful, so beautiful. If you add, if I will do a meditation and one day I have to do it to show you how you, how you look as evil and how you look as righteous, would you be able to do it? That's scary, right? And I can teach you how to do it. I mean, can you look inside and you will see how the evil side look like. They look like you, but in different shape. And then there is a good side of you, look like you, different shape. And you will start, because you know how you look like. You know it, but you're blocking it. You don't want to know. It's very scary. It's the same you. It's the same shape of your face, what you see in the mirror, with a little bit of facelift, or whatever you want to call it, okay? Some, <laughs> some change, okay? So the idea, God knows the choices. And Aaron said, tomorrow will be holy. The meaning that the day that the tablet was broken into the future, it will be the best day ever. Meaning that the reason we go into a negative time and tough time and no filter, as I say in Tammuz, is those tough times, those tough moments, is to build a room. And you always have to put in your calendar the toughest days of your life. Those will be exactly those days that give birth to the best day of your life. And it will happen in the same day. You have to remember that. That's a secret. A big secret. Now, there's another thing the Kabbalists are telling us. As I say, the month of crying. This is another verse. It comes from Megillat Echa, from Jeremiah. Jeremiah wrote a book, a Megillah, a scroll, that he cried about Jerusalem before Jerusalem was destroyed. It was a prophet. So he say, Eni, Eni, you're the mind. My eyes, my eyes, the water come out of my eyes. That's what he say, Jeremiah. Why did I present you this verse? Eni for the month of Tammuz and the other Eni for the month of Av. The two eyes that control Tammuz and Av is the eyes. In this month, you are able to vision, you are able to see everything, if you want. You're allowed to block it, or you, or you can see. You can see everything. You can have the clarity. Remember, no filter. You can see everything. The power that you will be able to see things as they are, cry. Your da mean, my eyes, my eyes, water is coming down. Cry. Sit and cry. Think about some painful moment in your life. Let it down. You have to feel it from two areas when you cry. One is above the belly button, okay? Controlled by the gallbladder. Gallbladder controlled the sadness and the people you couldn't forgive. And heart. All the heart broken. From love, from disappointment, from parents, from fear, to area. So when you cry, you either can cry from here, you cry from here. That's why when I do healing on people, most of the problem that I have is a heart broken. People with a heart broken. So much disappointment. So much expectation for better life. And the heart has been broken. They cry. It's very difficult. How can you not cry? But some people don't let themselves cry. Remember I had a man. Men usually don't cry. <coughs> usually I cry a lot, even from cartoon. I remember I was dating a girl before Debbie, long before Debbie. And Lion King just came out, the cartoon. You told you the story? No. <laughs> so we were dating, we were serious. And then I started crying when 
Lion King, you know, was looking for his father. And she started laughing, saying, you crying? This is just a cartoon, <laughs> you know. And I remember what, as Scorpio, as you know me, I said, we done. I said, what, over, over a cartoon? I said, we done, goodbye. Finish your relationship. Scorpio is different than cancer. I mean, you wouldn't understand it. It's not because I get hurt. I said, it can never work. Because for me, emotion, talking about emotion is the most important thing. Most of all, you can ask my kids, you know, it doesn't matter what movie, if it's emotional, it's emotional, you get it. I remember also another movie that everybody laughed and I cry was as good as it get. Because my father suffered from obsessive compulsive behavior and I finally understood him that it's how much pain he had. He had. So again, cry guys. Let the tears come out. And remember, this month is called a nine. This month is called eyes. So this month you see. If you remember, the month that been controlled, the tribe that controlled this month is called Reuven, Ruben. But what is Ruben if you break the name to two pieces? Reu in Hebrew means to see. Ben means in Hebrew a boy or a son. So because Jacob thought is make love to Rachel, but it was Leah. He didn't know what kind of soul he drew from heaven. He wanted to bring Joseph, but he thought it's Rachel. She didn't tell him it's a sister. I don't know if you're not familiar with the story. So that's when he was born to say, who is he? He came from heaven, but we don't know who he is. Reu Ben. See, it's a boy. Watch is a boy. Reu. To see. And who is Reuven in charge of? A month of cancer. So this is the eyes. Everything is the eyes. You can see everything in this month, if you want. I'll just, just come back from where the early dinner, as they call it in Los Angeles. People have early dinner here at 5.15. It's kind of interesting, you know? <laughs> 5.15. Like when I, I remember David B. flew from LA to Israel, to Tel Aviv. So I said to people, hey, you want to go to dinner at 7? So why 7? What happened at 7? <laughs> 7 is not dinner time? Oh, man. Seven. So what, what time you go to dinner? Let's go around quarter to ten. It's quarter to ten. I thought we were going to sleep at quarter to ten. Remember? <laughs> How do you go to quarter to ten? What do you do until quarter to ten? <laughs> it's interesting, you know, it's a, it's a mentality. 5.15 is kind of normal here. You go, early dinner, nice. Yeah. So I was very blessed. They came with their children. Children, they, they were very young. And the kids want only to sit next to me. And the father and mother look, say, really, I'm so sorry. So no, no. And the of, they, I never met them. Say, aye, aye. And the father tried to say, listen, this is my teacher, this is my mentor, my spiritual teacher. Said, Stop being too serious. You know, just let me have the kids. And I start telling him, I said, you know, the way that kids feel energy and you connect with kids is very beautiful because they see. They see you don't need to explain anything. They see, they're open. They see who you are, what you are, what you're all about. You know, we can manipulate people. Kids don't get manipulated by anything. Anything. Nothing. Cannot manipulate. So again, eyes. Now, behaving in this month. Do not walk alone between 12 in the afternoon till 5 p.m. Okay, 12 to 5 p.m. Try not to be found alone. Now, LA is not considered alone because there's people living around it. But if, let's say you want to go meditate in the desert, 12 to 5 will not be wise. Highly not recommended. Okay? Highly not recommended. What if I'm in the car? Same thing. Okay? After 5, it's okay. It's not a problem. Evening is not a problem. Night is not a problem. But this specific time is when the energy of, there is a certain angel, I cannot mention the name, Certain angels that control in this time, only in the month of Tammuz, that can create some thing, okay? Also, if you're going on a date, not between 12 to 5, please. I know even if it's on Sunday, do it after 5, do it in the morning. Breakfast is an amazing time. I never understood why people don't go to date on, on cappuccino and cake. It's the best. When you're awake, you're fresh, you think, well, at night, I don't know how you do it. Like, what left of you? You finish. Hi. Yeah, I like him. He like me. And we both like each other. I don't remember what it was his name. What do I know? I don't, my brain don't work. And then with the tequila or whatever they drink, the, the cocktail. 
cocktail, what left of you? you know, half of the brain gone before you arrive, then another uh, 40 gone, so you function from 10%, then you get married with somebody you don't even know, so what's the purpose? You go breakfast, you're fresh, it's beautiful, 7.30 in the morning, nice espresso, you talk, you're fresh, you, you have still energy. I, 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 they should change it, they should change the dating to the morning time. But I know it's, it's not cool. But anyway, anyway, not my business. Um, so at night, what are you going to do at night? Those of you who are capable, at least once a week, at least once, sit on the floor, sit on the floor, and cry for the pain, not of yourself, of others. You can either every night bring one soul into your mind, or either bring all the soul of Klal Israel, of all the people around you, and cry for them. Kabbalists usually do it from now till the ninth of Av. The ninth day of Av, I will give a lecture on the ninth day of Av when we get there. So you sit on the floor and you meditate that God, please help me to feel the pain of others. And once you feel it, cry for them. Cry for people who have no chance to make it. Cry for people who have pain. Cry for people who have no money. Cry for people who don't have health. Cry for people who don't have love. Cry for people who don't want to be open for love. Cry for people that you give them love, but they don't even want to receive it. That's what you're crying at night, not for you, okay? During the day, take 10 minutes to cry about your issue and stuff like this. Don't make your tears for yourself for too long. Now, I'm reading now from the Book of Formation that written 4,000 years ago. It says, ot chet Say the letter chet, the letter I showed you before, chet, let me show it to you again. This letter in charge of your eyes. Kashar lo keter tzifram zavav tzar baim sartan ba'olam, tamuz ba'shana v'yad yimin ba'nefesh zachar v'nekeba. So there is two things that are affecting your body, okay? The eyes and the right arm. The right arm somehow. Watch your right arm, watch your eyes, and try if you can. I know it's difficult sometimes to see the good in people, this ones. Find the good about people and cry for them if you don't see the good. Instead of judging them, when you see somebody bother you, upset you, write their name. At that night, you go on the floor, if you can stay awake till night, and cry for them. Very powerful. All right. Let me share with you another thing that's happening this month. This month, we have few events. One of them is the portion of Pirchas. That is my teacher teach. It's as power of healing. So when you say that mantra, El Na Refanala, is a mantra that actually applies for the entire month of cancer, to prevent cancer, to prevent disease. Any type of disease is being decided on this month. I will prepare you. Most of fight you're going to have more than any part of the year is in the month of Tammuz. People fight in this month more than any other month. People get hurt in this month more than other ones. People take things personally in this month more than any other month. Normally, Kabbalists take 30 days off with their mouths. They actually don't talk a lot. They're afraid. Kabbalists only afraid from two months in the year, Tammuz and Av. That's it. They're not afraid of any, you tell them negative time, no big deal. But when it's come to Tammuz, quiet, try not to judge, look inside, and let the time pass. Remember, after all, the spy that went to Israel, when they left in the month of Tammuz. That's why they came back with a bad report. And what did say? They went with their eyes to see what's good. And they came up to see what was wrong. For that reason, we should see the right about people. And whenever we don't like people, immediately cry for them. Don't hate them. Cry for them. Okay? Please remember. See if I told you everything before I take you to a short meditation. So, Bnei Sasra also bring, he said, those days are concealed. We can see how much power there is actually here. So what do we do? We do a few things. Let me show you the whole thing so it will be clear. It's a little bit complicated 
to explain it, but I will do my best to explain it. How many of you know the Aleph bit by order? Okay, I guess I have to do it. So I'm going to draw all the evil letter here. Try to do it fast. Second, I forgot what's the letter after this. <laughs> Those are the twenty two Ibu alphabet. The name of God usually build from those letter, not exactly this one because I'm not allowed to write it because I'm not allowed to erase it. So it built from those letter. If you take one letter before Yud, this is Yud. One letter before that, what do you get? This one, right? You see it? The one before. If you take, this is the letter instead of this, okay? Because I can, I'm not allowed to write it. If you take one letter before that, what do you get? Very good. You're doing good. If you take the one letter before Vav, what do you get? Good job. And again, same thing. This is the Yud Kei Vav Kei. You take one letter before, what do you get? You see it? You see that now? So basically, this name is one letter before the name of God. So what does that mean, before? Everybody got, grasp it? Before is always mercy. These letters, if you look at the calendar there, is the letter after. You see, after the Yud, what do you get there? See it? Kaf. After the A, you get Vav. See that? After, you understand? After Vav, you get. So those are code that giving to us to learn how to deal with these puns. Those are actually the original filter that you can use doing these puns, if you would remember, mercy. One letter after is judgment. And this all complicated code I can teach you is the first letter become last and the last become first. So if you take the Yud, is the 10 letter from the beginning. So you take 10 letter from the end, what do you get? You get, yeah. exactly, you get them. See it or no? If you go from tough up, you get them. So what happened? This is a name, it's called the mirror, it's a balance. Those three names have to be in front of your eyes the entire month to balance yourself. The holy name, the powerful name, and usually we do it three times a day in our pray on our meditation. We stop, we meditate, we are bringing the mercy, the judgment and the center column. And by that, we make sure that this month will be in the best place that it need to be. <coughs> now, I want to leave you with something. Maybe the story. It was two people that sitting on the bar, very good friend, best friend. And they get drunk a little bit. And then they're drinking. One say to his friend, do you love me? And his friend drunk say, of course I love you, brother. So okay, let's drink for it. And they keep drinking, keep drinking. And he keep asking, do you love me? They say, of course, and they drink. Can you love me? And this is going for a long time. Snowing outside, try to imagine. It's in Russia. When the, both of them are like on the floor already. So then, do you love me? <laughs> say, I love you. 
say, if you love me, how come I don't feel it? This month is not enough to love people. We need to make sure and be careful that they feel it. We're not loving people from distance in this month. We are looking to see if their soul able to receive the love. If you don't do it, guys, the value of the love will not be as strong as it's meant to be. Okay? Let's go to a short meditation with your permission. I'm going to make sure. And remember, um, this meditation is about basically to help us to get to a place where we can receive love and give love. Okay? So I want you to relax, focus on your breathing. Inhale and exhale, thinking about the months of cancer. Allow all what bother you to go away. And remember, because this month is controlled by the eyes, those of you who are not shy to cry here, you're allowed to cry. Those of you at home, don't shy to cry, cry. Those of you on Facebook who are not shy to cry, cry. So you just remove your pain, forgive yourself, forgive others, and allow the flow of life to come to you. And if you need to cry, this is the month to cry. While you do that, I want you to invite a situation or a person that truly bothers you right now. Something which is difficult. Something which creates discomfort. I want you to send love. And I want you to be able to say the verse this is mean nothing to me. And why do you say that? Cry for the situation of a dead person who causes you so much pain. Because cry is a releasing of the judgment. Just allow the tears to go and forgive yourself, forgive them, and believe that if you're capable of crying, those tears that are coming out of your eyes will clean your eyes to see the real picture, and also will allow that person, especially in the month of Tammuz, in the month of Cancer, because remember, this month is controlled by the eyes. So when you cry for a situation for another human being, for the pain they go through, or for the pain they cause you, even if they cause you pain, cry for their, they couldn't have the ability to reach out to you. You couldn't have the ability to do something good for you. So take a moment to feel the pain. Take a moment to get to that verse, any, any, your the mind. My eyes, my eyes, a water come out of my eyes. And in the same time, 
I want you to see your soul. I want you to see how beautiful you are this month. Even if it's the month of Tammuz that seem heavy, not easy, no filter, as the book of Yetzirah say. Focus on one good things about yourself. One good things about yourself. Focus on it right now. Accept yourself as you are. Love yourself as you are. Ask for more. Don't be shy. Ask for more. And whatever you ask for, see if you're capable to be like the moon, which is the planet that controls the months of cancer. See if you're able to reflect everything that you want for yourself. And if you cannot reflect it on others, there's no point for asking it. I'm going to wish you a Chodesh Tov, a great month, a positive month. And may you use your eyes this month, because this month is the month of the eyes. That's a Reuven, the head of the tribe. It's called Reuven, don't forget. I see it's a boy, which means the eyes control the month of Tammuz. So just make sure to be emotional this, this month. Don't be shy. And those of you who just joined me on Facebook, thank you, Johnny, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rabbi Anon. Thank you, Devor. Thank you, all of you who joined me on Facebook. You can find the whole video for one hour on my web. And for people here, thank you so much for crying, and thank you so much for your love. People at home on the web, thank you for you as well. Appreciate you came. And may we all have a great month and a great celebration. And uh, with the help of God, you know, this 17th of Tammuz will turn into a holiday, not to a day of mourning. Thank you very much.